and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's episode, I will bring you one of the videos that you requested the most, that is building an authorizer with API Gateway, a token machine, and a register endpoint. If you are interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> This video is going to use API Gateway Authorizer and API Gateway API Keys. I have talked about API Keys in an old video, I will link it here. And about the Authorizer is a way that the API Gateway will validate tokens or some authorization before passing it to the Lambda. So you can create secure endpoints without needing the Lambda to do all the security check for you. So you can build a custom authorizer and that will point to either a Lambda or a Cognito pool and then it will be secure. I have built already one of these using Auth0 and I link it also in the top. But now I will be using uh, JSON Web Tokens, that is a standard tokens and it's a library you can download in your project and generate those tokens and also validate those tokens. So you can have the whole serverless authentication in your project. I will create two endpoints and three lambdas. This is going to be very simple code, but it will give you the idea. The first endpoint will be a register endpoint where users using an API key in the header will request for a token. So only the ones that have the API key will be able to get the token. Then they get this token and then they will call the second endpoint that is just a hello endpoint that doesn't do anything. But in your case, it will be your business logic endpoint that will be get uh, requesting the token uh, in the authorizer header. So when the API gateway get this, then it will validate this token using a third Lambda that it will be the authorizer lambda that will just validate this token. Everything we are doing today can be done inside serverless project. You will see that I'm not logged into AWS console at all. So you can do everything from the serverless project and I will show you how to do that. So let's go to the code. The first thing we are going to do is to create a new serverless project. For that, we are going to create a directory. I will call serverless token authorization, but you can put any name you want. And I just create an npm project for that. Click next. And now I create a serverless framework project as always with the command sls create the stash template and then the AWS Node.js template. Then we get into our editor and we start working there. As always, the first thing we are going to do is to change the service name. I like to put the name of the project in the service so everything is the same. Then I like to have the, my profile default because I have many profiles in my computer and I like to put it in the region of Ireland. Now it's time to create our three functions that I already told, the hello, the authorizer and the generate token and I will create those. So the first one is hello that will be triggered with an HTTP event that is hello and we have the method get very straightforward. Then we will have the generate token lambda. That will be a lambda that also will be triggered by an HTTP event. But in this case, it will be private endpoint. That means that we need to add the API key to the request. And the last one is our authorized lambda that will be called in the API gateway to validate the the header, the authorization header, and we will put this authorizer, authorize. Authorize is the name of the lambda that we just create, and authorizer is asking for the name of the lambdas. Our API gateway from hello will be calling the authorize lambda during the authorizer time. Now we have our free lambdas. The next thing we need to do is to add the API key creation, and we add that in the provider, and we put a name to it. So. That's very important, don't forget it. I will show you a little bit this JWT library. This is a standard library for tokens and you can just go jwt.io and this page will show you a little bit more about the standard and also all the libraries that are supported by the standard 
that you can download no matter which language you are using to program. They have Python, they have Java, they have Node.js, and that's the one we are going to use. So we click their view repo, and it's an OS0 also library, as we were, I was saying that I already did this for the OS0 uh, integration, but so now we just install this package in our project by npm install, and now we can use it in our code. So we can create a new file, call authorizer and then in there we can start adding all the methods that we want for this to authorizer to do the first thing we want to do is first to require this library that we are going to use from here the jws uh, jwt and then we want to define a secret key i will show you how to define this secret key in a very secret way for now we just leave it here it's not very secret but for the purpose of the exercise is good but in a following video i will show you how to do that properly then we are going to create a method that is the generate token method. So that's the one that we will be using in our register endpoint. Basically, we send some JSON in and with the key and the JSON, it will generate a token that then we can return out. So it's a very simple method and we can see the library and it explains everything. So we can change a lot of things from there. I just use the basic setup, but you can make it as complex as you want. And for example, the chase on there is a full bar, but we will put whatever we want. We will create another method that is the decode token, also using this library. So these are the two methods from the library that we pass in a token and we verify the token with the secret key. And then we get the decoded token that basically is the JSON string that we just pass in. And if there is some error, we will return null. We, you can return an error if you want to. And also you can check the documentation that there is all the explanation on how to use this JWT verify. You can check it there and play around with this. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a method that will return a policy because the custom authorizers in the API gateway, what it will be do is it will be uh, evaluating the policy that the Lambda authorization Lambda is returning and that needs to be a valid uh, I am a AWS policy, so we need to return a um, policy over a resource. So we will generate a policy and we will, in this documentation is everything explained and the helper function to generate that policy. And I will put here mine, but you can do whatever you want. You can, it's very similar to this one. And this will give uh, rights, allow or deny access to some, some resource. In this case, it will be the method ARN of our Lambda that we want to execute. Now we'll just generate this policy that it acts on a principle that is the user. It has an effect, it allow or deny, and a resource is the method ARN. And then we will call this from another method that is the one that it will be calling every time the authorizer is called. That is the generate policy method. And it pass a token and a method ARN that the one we want to give permission. And then we just decode the token. If the token is not null, then we generate the policy with allow and the method ARN. And if the token is null, then we throw an unauthorized error that we will catch in our handler. So now let's do our handler. The first thing we need to do is to require this class, uh, this module that we just created, the authorizer. We are going to create the two more lambdas because hello is there for us just doesn't do anything. I will just clean it up a little bit for purposes of the exercise. I will just put some message here. The token was validate and everything is fine. Yeah. And now I will create uh, two more methods, one for the register and one for the authorize. So the one for the register is the method generate token and we will be calling the authorizer generate token with the event body. So whatever is in the body will be the JSON to sign. So we will pass some random stuff in the body and then we'll get a token back in our response. And then we will be creating the authorize function that this will be, will be called every time the authorizer is called. And there we will see that we will get the token and the method ARN and we will pass it to the authorizer generate policy. And if there is no error, it will just return the policy. And if there is an error, it will return authorize. Now we can deploy. This will create everything for us. It will create the API keys. It will create the authorizer. It will create the free lambdas and the two API gateways. So we don't need to 
go to AWS console whatsoever to get up this setup. So you will see how easy it is. So let's wait for the deployment to, to finish. And then when we get the service information there, you can see everything. Service name, the stage, the region, the API keys, you will get it there. You can also check it, it from your AWS console, but, but here is uh, there. And then you will have the two endpoints and the functions that we will be calling. So now we can try that in Postman, for example. So we can go to Postman and we can create a post to the register passing some um, JSON in the body and then we can call that endpoint and get a token back. So we create this JSON in the in the body of the post that it can be anything we are not validating it somehow so we just put whatever we want but if you want to make it more fancy you can validate it later you send that message and you get a token back and that token then will be valid for a time if you said so if not it will be sure you can use it and then we can call the next endpoint that is the hello endpoint and see what happens and we put in the headers the authorizing authorization and we put the token in there and then we send and then we get the token was valid and everything is fine and then if we check the logs there is nothing because we have not written any logs in that method but if we check the logs of the authorize we will get something out as well because there we have put some console logs so and we can see in the logs even that the JSON that we decoded is the right one, is the one we put in. So we can also validate that there if we want to, part of the token validation. So that's it. I hope you like this video. If you like, give a big thumbs up. I will be making a Cognito Authorizer video soon, but I first do this one and then I move forward. And then I also planning to do some video for storing secrets in AWS that you might be interested in. So this will fit on that. So we all build a secure ecosystem for our services. If you have any other requests that you would like to see, just leave it in the comment below. I like to see what is your interest and build videos about that. Around here, as always, there's other videos from my channel for you to watch. If you want, go ahead and click on, and I see you in the next episode of FUBAR. Ciao!